Today, we're diving into the mysteries of the God Valley Incident, a convergence of the greatest powers in history and the hidden secrets behind it. In One Piece chapter 1096, the world's highest level of power gathered in God Valley, leading to an unbelievable turn of events. Particularly, the actions of the Holy Knights and other organizations hint at significant foreshadowing within the story. And now, new information has surfaced about the God Valley Incident and the true nature of these organizations. I'm excited to delve into the secrets of the God Valley Incident and related organizations in detail. If you have a fresh perspective on this analysis, feel free to share it in the comments. If you find the upcoming analysis interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe. Please note, this video contains spoilers up to chapter 1096. So, let's get started. First up, let's talk about the Holy Knights who were the first to make a move. They're a central organization in the native hunting competition. To give you an idea, the Holy Knights, to which the famed Saint Figuran Garling belongs, act as a security force within the Holy Land of Mary Joie, judging the Celestial Dragons much like Celestial Dragons themselves. In fact, they interrogated and punished Saint Miosagardo for letting the would-be assassin of Saint Charles escape. Moreover, the Holy Knights are an organization even the Revolutionary Army fears. Monkey D. Dragon, the chief of the Revolutionary Army, stated that the real battle begins once the Holy Knights step in. This alone suggests their top-tier strength within the story. The Revolutionary Army has been building its strength specifically to fight the Holy Knights. However, recent revelations suggest that the Holy Knights might not actually be Celestial Dragons. We thought Saint Figuran Garling, with his Celestial Dragon-like name, was special, wielding power to judge other Celestial Dragons. And we assumed he had some degree of influence even over characters like Shanks. But in Chapter 1096, amidst the attacks by Rox and Roger, St. Garling commanded, Lower the Marines! Protect the Celestial Dragons! This line feels as if he's not a Celestial Dragon himself. If he were, asking for protection for Celestial Dragons would seem odd. Additionally, there's a sense of incongruity about a new character, supposedly part of the Holy Knights. This character, wearing a mask marked with the number 46, has actually appeared before as one of the children at Mother Carmel's Sheep's House. While it could be someone else, the unique mask suggests a definite connection to the Sheep's House children. This raises the question, could the Holy Knights be an organization comprised of strong individuals gathered from around the world? There are two theories we can consider. First, as I just mentioned, they could be an assembly of strong individuals from around the world gathered for defense. The second theory is that those born into the Holy Knights need to undergo training, hence they are sent to the surface instead of staying in Mary Joie. The idea is that children born into this group are dropped into a valley, and only those who climb back up, proving their vigor and potential, are welcomed as Holy Knights. It makes sense for an organization protecting Celestial Dragons to be strong. How the Holy Knights are organized, and whether they are actually Celestial Dragons, is something to keep an eye on in future revelations. Now let's talk about the Rocks Pirates, who were the second to make their move. They were like an all-star team, a party too strong for any game, filled with legendary pirates. This world's strongest pirate crew, the Rocks Pirates, were a brutal group gathered on the pirate island Hachinosu for a lucrative opportunity. They were known for being rough and fiercely independent, with a team full of unique personalities, leading to constant infighting. Members like Whitebeard, Big Mom, Kaido, and Shiki, that's an insanely impressive lineup. However, the information we had, and what's been revealed now, paints a slightly different picture. While they were indeed diverse in personality, they seemed to have more cohesion than expected. Whitebeard's line, Rox loses sight of his goal, suggests that Rox probably gets tunnel vision, forgetting everything else when focused on something. In a way, they share some traits with Luffy, minus the cruelty. Looking beyond gender, the Rox pirates share more in common with the Straw Hat crew than you might think. There are many parallels, like the calm Whitebeard and Zoro, Stussy tagging along with Chopper, and the powerhouse rookies Kaido and Jinbi. Considering this, the Rocks might have been ordinary pirates, vilified more than they deserved. The Rocks pirates, infamous for their discord and representing evil, might be a case of misdirection. After all, Luffy caused havoc in Impel Down and Marineford and declared war on the world government at Annie's lobby. From an outsider's perspective, that's pretty villainous. So the truth about the Rocks pirates might be different than we thought. By the way, in the latest chapter, nine members of the Rocks pirates were depicted. Did you figure out who's who? Whitebeard, Kaido, and Big Mom are obvious from their appearance, and the character riding Whitebeard, known as the woman loved by him, is Stussy. The character talking to Stussy, with a snake motif common to both, is Gloriosa, known now as Elder Neon. The one drinking alcohol is Captain John, that's clear. But what about Wang Ji and Silver Axe? Which is which? 
If you check the Thriller Bark art, the character on top appeared as a zombie soldier. From this, I believe the one wearing armor is Silveraxe, and the one with more shadows is Wang Ji. Wang Ji lost to Blackbeard in the Rocky Port incident, so his appearance as a zombie soldier in Thriller Bark is quite contradictory. Interestingly, it wasn't just Silveraxe from the Rocks Pirates who ended up as a zombie soldier. Characters near Whitebeard's face, one holding the same weapon as Blackbeard and another with a large face and multiple arms, also appeared as zombie soldiers. This implies that, had Moriah's shadow power been stronger, he could have created the mightiest army. Now about the Rocks Pirates gathered for a major event at God Valley, how did they know that the Celestial Dragons had invaded? Well, it was all part of Ginny's plan, who had been leaking information about God Valley for two weeks. Both the Rocks and Roger took the bait and assembled there. But what remains a mystery is the true intention of the Rocks Pirates. They all seem to be after Devil Fruits, whether that was their real goal is still unclear. So the true purpose behind the formation of the Rocks Pirates remains shrouded in mystery. It feels a bit off to think that they gathered solely for Devil Fruits. Why the Celestial Dragons appeared and what they were after raises further questions. If Devil Fruits were indeed the goal, then Big Mom being part of the Rocks Pirates and giving Kaido the fish fish fruit seemed contradictory. If they were after Devil Fruits, Big Mom, already a fruit user, wouldn't have been necessary. And if they were after the monetary value of the fruits, giving one to Kaido doesn't add up. So God Valley remains full of unanswered questions. Perhaps there's a secret hidden in its resources. Given Blackbeard's fixation on Hachinosu, the Pirate Island's treasure might still be there. Now let's dive into the Roger Pirates. 25 years ago, they were the first to conquer the Grand Line and the only ones to ever reach Raftel. This legendary crew was also present at God Valley 38 years ago. Given the Navy's top secret stance, it's likely Roger and his crew headed to God Valley based on Ginny's intel. The sight of Roger, Rayleigh, and Skopper Yaban in their prime was truly exhilarating, wasn't it? So it seems Garp showed up because Roger was there, which makes Sengoku's comment about just being there a bit of a stretch. The lie might be tied to the treasure of God Valley, and Roger probably aimed for the same thing as rocks. What exactly they were after remains unknown, but it wasn't just ordinary treasure. As revealed in Chapter 1096 and Film Red, Roger had been waiting a year for this moment. He said, It's been a year. Do you know how I've felt? If it were just treasure, there'd be no need to wait. Moreover, the Red Film giveaway reveals that they indeed took the treasure, but it was more of a bonus. Their primary objective was something else. If it was a devil fruit, Big Mom's satisfaction wouldn't make sense, and there's a hint of resources being involved. Maybe Roger knew something from Roadstar Island and waited a year for it. If it's related to Raftel, that's mind-blowing. Amidst the chaos at God Valley, Garp arrived to capture Roger. He was dispatched by Kong and ended up at this historical event, which later made him a hero. Oddly, Garp, who was supposed to capture Roger, teamed up with him to protect the Celestial Dragons and their slaves. Normally, you'd expect a three-way battle, Rox and Roger wanting treasure, and the Navy protecting the Celestial Dragons. And the Navy should not help Celestial Dragons, but would typically focus on freeing slaves from the Holy Knights and Pirates, or do something naval-like, or fight instinctively. But the truth revealed by Sengoku contradicts Garp's justice. Was Sengoku lying, or was there a reason for this turn of events? The real story behind Garp's actions is something I'm eager to know. Finally, let's talk about the slaves, not the pirates or the navy. They had no choice but to flee, knowing they could be enslaved again even if protected by the navy. Thanks to Ivankov, Ginny, and Kama's plan, 500 slaves were freed. Kama used his pawpaw fruit abilities, just like he did to help the Straw Hats escape from Sabadi, to get the slaves out of God Valley. These actions of Kama and others brought to light some resolved plot points and new mysteries. Let's discuss three of them. First, Kama's line, I'll never forget your face, Iwachan. This line had a big twist. During the Battle of Marineford, after his modifications, Kama had forgotten Ivankov's face. Back then, I just took it as a self-deprecating joke. But knowing the past now, the line, being forgotten is a first for me, carries a lot more weight. Honestly, the sadness of being forgotten and attacked by Kama is unimaginably painful. The second twist involves people Kama save. This leads us to the story of the Sorbet Kingdom. A freckled boy and a mohawked boy were saved by Kama. Turns out, these two are members of the Bonnie Pirates. Perhaps, despite being bullies themselves, they joined Bonnie's crew out of gratitude for being saved by Kama. Chapter 1096, filled with such hidden mechanisms, leaves the reason behind Kama being called a tyrant a mystery. But we can speculate. Kama's past seems linked to Dressrosa. 
There are similarities like the use of devil fruits as prizes and humans turned into toys in Dress Rosa, reminiscent of how people were treated like toys in God Valley. Just like Kiros, driven by paternal love to protect Rebecca, Ginny struck a boy to protect Kama. There are similarities. So maybe Kama becoming a tyrant because, like Riku Dold 3, he was manipulated by a celestial dragon. That wraps up the tale of this legendary battle. Hope you enjoyed this exhilarating flashback. That's my analysis. What do you guys think? That's it for today. This channel posts summaries, explanations, and ranking videos related to One Piece. If you like One Piece, we would be happy if you could support us by subscribing to our channel and commenting. Thank you for watching till the end. See you in the next video!